Paradise. The daughters of Zeus, Pallas, Athena, Artemis, and Aphrodite, aka Minerva, Diana, and Venus. Minerva was the daughter of Zeus alone. No mother bore her. Full grown and in full armor, she sprang from his head. In the earliest account of her, the Iliad, she is a fierce and ruthless battle goddess. But elsewhere, she is a warlike only to defend the state and the home from outside enemies. She was preeminently the goddess of the city, the protector of the civilized, of handicrafts and agriculture, the inventor of the bridle, who first tamed horses for men to use. She was Zeus's favorite child. He trusted her to carry the awful Aegis, his buckler, and his devastating weapon, the Thunderbolt. The word oftenest used to describe her is grey eye, or as it is sometimes translated, flashing eye. Of the three virgin goddesses, she was the chief and the maiden, the Parthenos, and her temple, the Parthenon. In later poetry, she is the embodiment of wisdom, reason, purity. Athens was her special city. The olive created by her was her tree, the owl, her bird. Artemis, Apollo's twin sister, daughter of Zeus and Leto. She was one of the three maiden goddesses of Olympus. Golden Aphrodite, who stirs with love all creation, cannot bend nor ensnare three hearts. The pure maiden Vesta, grey-eyed Athena who cares but for war and the arts of the craftsman. Artemis, lover of woods and the wild chase over the mountains. She was the lady of wild things, huntsman in chief to the gods. An odd office for a woman, like a good huntsman. She was careful to preserve the young. She was the protectress of dewy youth everywhere. Nevertheless, with one of those startling contradictions so common in mythology, she kept the Greek fleet from sailing to Troy until they sacrificed a maiden to her. In many another story too, she is fierce and revengeful. On the other hand, when women died a swift and painless death, they were held to have been slain by her silver arrows. As Phobos was the sun, she was the moon, called Phoebe and Selene, Luna in Latin. Neither name originally belonged to her. Phoebe was a titan, one of the older gods. So too was Selene, a moon goddess. Indeed, but not connected with Apollo, she was the sister of Helios, the sun god, with whom Apollo was confused. In the later poets, Artemis is identified with Hecate. She is the goddess with three forms, Selene in the sky, Artemis on Earth, Hecate in the lower world, and in the world above when it is wrapped in darkness. Hecate was the goddess of the dark of the moon, the black nights when the moon is hidden. She was associated with deeds of darkness, the goddess of the crossways, which were held to be ghostly places of evil magic, an awful divinity. Hecate of Hell, mighty to shatter every stubborn thing, hark, Hark her hounds are baying through the town. Where three roads meet, there she is standing. It is a strange transformation from the lovely huntress flashing through the forest, from the moon making all beautiful with her light, from the pure maiden goddess from whom, whoso is chaste of spirit utterly, may gather leaves and fruits and flowers, the unchaste never. In her is shown most vividly the uncertainty between good and evil, which is apparent in every one of the divinities. The cypress was sacred to her, and all wild animals, but especially the deer. Aphrodite, the goddess of love and beauty, who beguiled all gods and men alike, the laughter-loving goddess, who laughed sweetly or mockingly at those her wiles had conquered, the irresistible goddess who stole away even the wits of the wise. She is the daughter of Zeus and Dione in the Iliad, but in the later poem she is said to have sprung from the foam of the sea, and her name was explained as meaning the foam risen. Aphros is foam in Greek. This sea birth took place near the Cytheria, from where she was wafted to Cyprus. Both islands were ever after sacred to her, and she was called Cytheria, or the Cyprian, as often as by her proper name. One of the Homeric hymns, calling her beautiful golden goddess, says of her, the breath of the west wind bore her, over the sounding sea, up from the delicate foam to wave-ringed Cyprus her isle, and the hour's golden wreath welcomed her joyously. They clad her in raiment immortal, and brought her to the gods. Wonder seized them all as they saw, violet-crowned Cytheria. The Romans wrote of her in the same way, with her beauty comes. The winds flee before her, and the stormed clouds sweet flowers embroider the earth. The waves of the sea laugh. She moves in radiant light. 
Without her, there is no joy, nor loveliness anywhere. This is the picture the poets like to best paint her. But she had another side too. It was natural that she would cut a poor figure in the Iliad, where the battles of heroes is the theme. She is a soft, weak creature there, whom a mortal need not fear to attack. In later poems, she is usually shown as treacherous and malicious exerting a deadly and destructive power over men. In most of the story, she is the wife of Hephaestus, aka Vulcan, the lame and ugly god of the forge. The myrtle was her tree, the dove her bird, sometimes too, the sparrow and the swan. 